Hey, welcome back. Let's continue to model the engine with the focus on the oil filter today. All right, pull up the gizmo. You'll see a gear icon there. Click it and pick out cylinder 3D. Set the H device to 100. Next, you'll want to unmask the faces at the bottom of the model and extrude them out a couple of times using the gizmo. Next, let's delete those top faces. Pick the Z model brush and for the edge action, select close. For the targets, choose convex hole and circle. And for the modifiers, go with polygroup flat. Now let's grab the clip curve brush to flatten the top. Then Q mesh the bottom poly loop while holding shift. At this point, we're going to add a bunch of edge loops with insert multiple edge loops. After you've done that, press QC50. Then we'll adjust the creasing with the Z modeler brush. Go ahead and click on Dynamesh Utility, setting the poly count to 0.5, which is 500,000. Here's a neat little trick with the Mask Lasso brush. When you're zoomed in close on your model, this brush will give you a sharp, clean mask. But if you zoom out and use it, you'll notice it actually blurs the mask edge. That's a handy tip for those stubborn high poly models that won't blur the mask no matter what you do. Next, let's pick up the Clip Circle Center Brush. Turn on Symmetry on the Z-axis and set the Radial Count to 14. We'll smooth that out just a touch. Clear the mask. Then crank up the radial count to 100. Let's grab your standard brush now. Go ahead and use the adjust last slider to dial it back a bit. Now we're going to switch things up and use the trim brush to carve a slight angle change into the model. Don't forget to trim the bottom half and dial it back a bit using the adjust last slider. All right, on to the next stage. Let's create the bottom of the engine where the oil sits. Bring up the gizmo again and click on the gear. This time, select Polycube. Hit Unify and then Delete Loops. Let's then scale and position the cube into place. Add in a few more edge loops with insert multiple edge loops. Then hit QC50 and set the crease level to 2. Next up, we're going to set the polygon action to inset, the target to flat island, and the modifier to legacy. Q mesh to polygroup. Then unmask the top faces and move them down a notch. Hit Ctrl W to group visible. Now you see those three rows? Alt tag them and Q mesh them upwards. Then unmask the top faces again and move them up. Don't forget to hit QC50. Next, unmask the top three rows and use the gizmo to rotate them down. Unmask the remaining polys and clip them down too.
Then let's slice in an edge loop. Next, you'll want to click on Weld Points with the Weld Distance set to 4. We can do away with those extra edges, so go ahead and delete them. Hit QC50 once more. Now unmask the top and scale them inwards. We're going to crease the edges using our Z-Modeler brush. Now let's snap to the bottom view and alt-click the faces to transpose. Then move them upwards a bit. Move the gizmo to the back of the model and rotate it up. Now we're going to remove the edge loop to improve the slope. Grab the Move Infinite Depth Brush and make some adjustments. Unmask the points to isolate the movement a bit better. Let's bring up the Z Model Brush to add a supporting loop. Unmask the top edges and adjust them with the gizmo. Q-mesh the single poly and slide the bottom edge back. Go ahead and select the Clip Curve brush to flatten the top. Then we can grab the Z-Muller brush and set up the creases. Let's also add some supporting loops to modify the creasing a bit more. Bring up the gizmo and mask the model. From the gear menu, let's choose Cylinder 3D. Now invert that mask and split unmasked points. Press QC50. Then scale the model down and move it over to the corner. Unmask the top and move it down slightly. Let's hold control while moving the gizmo to create a duplicate. Now we can continue to duplicate and position the cylinders. Unmask those two cylinders, duplicate and move them upwards. Invert the mask and split unmasked points. Then unmask the tops and move them up and over a bit. Unmask one of the cylinders and move it over to the other side. Apply the dynamic subdivisions and delete the lower subdivisions. Now we can switch over to the smaller cylinder subtool. Apply those dynamic subdivisions and delete the lower subdivisions. Repeat these steps for the main body as well. We're going to merge all the subtools now. Seems like we forgot to duplicate one of the cylinders. It's no big deal. Unmask one of the larger cylinders and duplicate it. 
Next, isolate the taller cylinders using the Select Rec brush and hit Group as Dynamesh Sub. Pull up the gizmo, click on the gear, and select Remesh by Union. Lock it in by hitting Accept. We're going to run a Dynamesh utility with a poly count of 1 million next. Grab the mask curve brush and mask the bottom. Use the clip circle center brush to carve out the corner. Then use the planar rec to flatten out the bottom. Grab the planar brush and run a Dynamesh. If the poly count is too high, don't worry. You can use the picker to set the mesh resolution to something more manageable. Now it's time to create the top part of the air filter container, which sits right under the gas tank. Bring up the gizmo again, click on the gear and choose Polycube. Hit Unify and then Delete Loops. Unmask the face on the bottom and move it up slightly. Hold Control and move with the gizmo to extrude. Let's scale it along the x-axis and then clear the mask. Snap to a side view and scale it down. Next, select Inset Flat Island and then Q-Mesh that polygroup island. Move the gizmo to the corner. Give it a slight upwards rotation and scale it inwards. Time to insert a couple of edge loops. Grab the Move Infinite Depth brush and then switch back to the Z Zmoller brush to delete the bottom polys. Bevel the edges at the back, front, and top. Switch to the Insert Multiple Edge Loops with Interactive Elevation to give our bevels a rounded look. Press Ctrl W to group visible and then flatten them by transposing the poly loop. You can press Y to switch it to the transpose line to scale it a bit faster. Let's add more edge loops to square things up. Hit Ctrl W again to group visible. Mask out the bottom with a mask curve and run a relax. Switch to the mask pen and make a few tweaks using the Move Infinite Depth brush. Now let's turn on Dynamic to check our progress so far. Next we'll extrude the bottom edges slightly, then switch to the Close Convex Hole and select one line. Grab the middle poly group, press Ctrl Shift and X to expand the selection, then mask it and invert the mask. With the transpose line, scale it until it's flat. Then we can set up our creasing and turn on dynamic again. Turn on symmetry along the x-axis and grab the clip curve brush. Set the smooth subdivisions to 4, 
and the crease level to two. Go ahead and mask out the bottom and make a few adjustments using the Move Infinite Depth Brush. 